Okay, before I talk about fade viruses, I want to talk about one more thing. This step right here. What is this? Their entry. So let's talk about that real fast. There are two ways that an animal virus can enter a host cell. What are they? I like to call envelope fusion because it makes your life a lot easier. Yep. Okay. What do you guys know about it? Yeah, so who can tell me first off, if I want to be a virus, there are three things I must have. Capsid, spikes, and a genome, okay? Now when we talk about bacteria, there are so many bonuses. They can have a flagella, they can have fimbria, they can have capsules, they can have endospores, etc. Okay, there are lots of different bonuses. But when I'm talking about virus, there's only one bonus. What's their bonus? An envelope. Does every virus have an envelope? No. no. Let's say this one does. First of all, what is an envelope? Stolen from your host. Camouflage is perfect word for it. So when a virus is in a host cell, it pretty much has everything, well, not in a host cell, in a human body, has everything going against it. We have macrophages, different phagocytes going around, and they're checking all day long. Are you human? Yep, you're good. You human? Good, good. Then they get to a virus, and what do they do? They eat it, okay? Because they're like, I don't know what you are, I haven't seen you around before, I'm going to eat you. The virus obviously doesn't want to be eaten, right? Because then he can't do anything. So what he'll do is when he leaves a host cell, remember all viruses are born from a host cell, right? because viruses need to go into a host cell to replicate. So when he's leaving the host cell, what he'll do is he will roll around on our membranes, our phospholipid bilayer. Does that make sense to everyone? So he'll roll around. What is he doing? Oh, who said that? Budding. What's budding? It's the process of getting the envelope. So he'll roll around. This is called the process of budding. He'll roll around, and that's how he will acquire an envelope. He literally wraps himself in our phospholipid bilayer. Why would he want to do that? To camouflage. So now when he goes out, when he's inside the host cell, when we learn about the immune system, which is like my favorite thing ever, we'll learn that he's not necessarily safe, but he's safer inside the host cell. But once he leaves, it's like the dangerous world out there. It has all those phagocytes, everything trying to eat him. So what he does is he wraps himself in this phospholipid bilayer, so that the phagocytes that go around, check, 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 they get to the virus, and what do they think? <laughs> check, you're human, go on your way, okay? So envelopes are awesome if you're a virus. Not all of them have it, like a lot, of, usually when they go to your GI tract, your, the gastric juice will just rip them off, so they don't bother. But this guy has an envelope, so he was born, you know he did budding, right? Now, now he wants to enter a host cell and make all of his own babies. So, he can do envelope fusion, right? What do you need to do envelope fusion? Envelope. An envelope. What, how does envelope fusion work? It's the same material, so it just squishes on it. Yeah, because think about it. This is my cell, right? So technically that and this are made of the same thing, right? For all we know, he could have came out of that cell and was going right back in. Or he could just be going to the neighbor. Okay? So these are made out of the same thing. So all he has to do is attach. Those will fuse together, and then just his capsid comes in. Then he breaks open, lets out his genome, and then it goes through that whole process we just talked about. Now, if I'm a naked virus, can I do envelope fusion? No, no. no because our mite is the capsid, and the, my phospholipid bile are made of the same thing. No, so can they fuse together? No. So when we have a, a, a virus that has a DNA genome, how do they go into the, to the nucleus? Do they go through the fusion, 
or do we need to know that? When it comes to the genome, don't worry about it. Okay. When it comes to entry, you just need to know does it have an envelope or not. Don't worry about the genome. The genome is what happens. The only reason you would worry about the genome is what it does once it's inside. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, now let's say I have a naked virus, which means he doesn't have an envelope. Like we said, he can't do envelope fusion, right? So what does he do? The other word on the board, endocytosis. So how does that work? He attaches the spikes first, and then he kind of, like someone said, kind of tricks. Because you want to love me inside, right? And the cell's like, oh, yeah, I actually do. <laughs> and so he'll form this little vesicle and just literally swallows him. And then the vesicle will break open as well as the virus, let out its nucleic acid, and then based on its genome, it will do what it does. <laughs> so what's the rule for endocytosis? We said the rule for envelope fusions need an envelope. You don't have to have an envelope. But can you have an envelope? Yes. So endocytosis you can do if you're naked or if you have an envelope. Now, when I took the class, okay, this should be obvious. You need to know which viruses have an envelope before you go into the test. If there's a virus that does not have an envelope, you shouldn't even second guess. has to be endocytosis, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I took the class, if it has an envelope, it has a choice, right? It can do envelope fusion or endocytosis. But usually they have a preference. And I know influenza is enveloped, right? Mm -hmm. For example, HIV and influenza are both enveloped. HIV does envelope fusion and influenza does endocytosis. But did he tell you you need to know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I think you'll be good. I think he'll only ask you if it is a um, unenveloped virus, so no endocytosis. Okay. But if he asks you if there's an envelope virus and he asks you which one it can do, unless he told you specifics, it can do both. Okay.